Okay, so I'm a neuroscientist, and I study perception. And the reason why I study perception is perception underpins everything you think, you believe, you know, who you fall in love with, the clothes you wear or not, okay? Everything begins with perception. So to understand perception is to actually understand what it is to be human. And I have one aim in this talk, and it's the aim I have in every single talk, which is I want you to know less at the end than you think you know now, okay? Because basically I want to celebrate doubt, because nothing interesting begins without doubt. Okay? And I want you to doubt at the most fundamental level of whether or not you see reality. So how many of you, when you woke up this morning, think you saw the world as it really is? <laughs> it's the first audience that no one puts up their hand. All right? Not a surprise. Okay, what about when you're not at Burning Man? All right? How many of you think you see the world as it really is? Okay? If not, what are you seeing? What are you seeing if you're not seeing the world as it really is? You're seeing perception, I know, you're seeing perception, but perception of what? Of what you want to see. But within what you want to see, is that still reality? I mean, if you're not seeing reality, what are you seeing? The sum of your five senses, but are they accurate? Maybe not. So I want you to, we're gonna do a few demonstrations. I, like, I always bring toys, and this is why I like a handheld mic, because I can't talk with just one hand. So I'm gonna put this down in a second, but I'm gonna spin this, and I want you to notice its direction of rotation, and then just keep looking at it, blink, blur your eyes, and suddenly it might go in the opposite direction. Okay, one second. Thank you. At some point, it'll go in the opposite direction. Blur your eyes. Can you get it to flip? Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Most audiences take a lot longer. <laughs> it's not actually falling apart. That's just your perception. Nothing's real, okay? Oh, shit. It's fine, it's fine. Okay. Raise your hand if you can get it flip. Amazing. All right. Now, question for you. Which direction is it actually rotating? How do you know? Your fact is your brain doesn't know, which is why it's flipping back and forth depending on how you look at it. Right? It's actually your imagination that's causing it to flip. So the point is that we actually never see the world as it really is because you can't. We're physically separate from our physical world, okay? The only information we get from the world is through our senses, and that information is inherently meaningless. So your brain has to see something else, right? And it has to see it in another way, which is it uses its history of experience. It has to engage with the world, all right? So I need someone who can throw a ball. Can you throw a ball? Are you in a state to throw a ball? <laughs> okay, can you stand there? Okay, well, right there. We're gonna make it a bit more precarious. Okay, right. So now we have this ball, and I want you to see that, that blue X, okay? I want you to simply hit it underhand. I'm gonna have to do this with one hand. So, all right, so right, there you go. Okay, now. It's going to be a challenge. Underhand, underhand, underhand. See if you can hit that dot, okay? Yeah, whenever you want. Not bad, okay? Try it again. Okay, he's throwing it straight. Do we agree? Okay, surprising at Burning Man. Okay, now, put this on and turn around so everyone can see how lovely you look. All right, <laughs> wonderful. What's your name, by the way? Remy. Remy, like... Uh, Remy. Remy, okay, Remy. Don't fall off the stage, yeah, yeah. okay? Now I want you to hit the square, the, the cross, okay? <laughs> now Remy is wearing prisms, okay? His brain is now gonna get feedback and he's going to learn to see the world 
in a new way. His brain is literally redefining normality by engaging with the world. Okay? He's now starting to throw it straighter. Oh, shit. <laughs> Can we get that? Okay. Go ahead. Keep doing it. I really want you to learn this. Okay? Really good. All right? Keep going. Keep going. Right? Keep going. His brain is literally seeing the world in a new way. Right? Now, what I want you to do is hit the dot. <laughs> right? He knows he's not wearing the goggles, right? Okay, that's good. We're back to normal. Thank you very much. All right. What's next? Okay, so when we engage with the world, what do we get? We don't get to see reality. We see the world in a way that proved useful to see in the past. We get assumptions. We get our boundaries. We define our boundaries and our assumptions through engaging with the world. That's literally what defines what we see, even the colors that we see. In fact, our assumptions define who we are. And I want to show you how profound those assumptions are. So, would you mind coming up? Okay, thank you. And your name is? Lucian. Okay, Lucian. Turn around and face the lovely people, okay? Now, I'm going to put this lovely hat on. He's got a big head. Okay, now, face that way, and I'm going to, I don't know, clap, clap, okay? Does it make a difference if I'm deaf in my ear? Are you deaf in one ear? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. All right. <laughs> Do you want to come up? Uh, oh, you, yes, yes, please. Okay. That's brilliant. I mean, not brilliant, but okay. Now, your name is? Raki. Raki. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, now, you're going to wear the hat. Okay, face that way, and I'm just going to clap, and I want you to point in the direction that you hear me clapping, facing that way. Face that way, okay. Great. Okay, now... Okay? Okay, okay. now I want you to point in the direction you hear me. Close your eyes and point in the direction you hear me clapping. What's the assumption her brain is using? The assumption her brain is us using is that sound from this side takes longer to hit this ear than that ear. So when I switch the ears, it's called an ear switcher, when the sound comes from over here, she hears it coming from over there because it's been switched. So that's how fundamental the assumptions are that we use. But what's really fundamental is that almost all of us are blind to the assumptions we use. We're almost all blind to our boundaries. Right? We walk around thinking that we're making conscious free will decisions all the time. In fact, all we're ever doing is responding according to the history of our experience. But we think we know what our assumptions are. So I want to play a little game and show you how blind you are to your assumptions. Um, and it's very useful to have these assumptions because every single step you take is literally using an assumption. The assumption that the ground isn't going to give way, that the chair won't give way when you sit on it. Right? So, I can't draw this. I'm going to have to draw it in your mind. I want you to imagine a shape with lots of points on it. Okay? It's not a square, a triangle, or a rectangle, but it has lots of points, sharp points. 
Okay, can you hold that shape? Yes? Okay, now I want you to imagine another shape which is very rounded, like a cloud. Okay, you have those two shapes? Now, those shapes don't have names, right? Agreed? They're abstract shapes. I'm going to give you two words. Kiki and boo-boo. Okay? Now, you independent, free will people, I want you to tell me which of those shapes is kiki and which of those shapes is boo-boo. Okay? How many people say the sharp shape is kiki? Yes. How many people say the rounded shape is boo-boo? Yes. Like 98% of the rest of the population of the world. Okay? And if I ask you why, you will all give me a reason. But what you don't know is the assumption your brain is actually using, which is the assumption of pain. Okay? Your brain has an overrepresentation of sharpness and roundedness because of pain. So if I give you the word love and I give you the word hate, which of those ships is hate and which of those words is love? Now, of course, that's contextual dependent on the relationship you're in right now. Okay? <laughs> and if I give you the word odio, almost most of you will think odio is the rounded shape unless you speak Spanish you'll think it's the sharp shape, because odio means hate. And if I tell you hate and prick your finger, I activate the same parts of your brain. Now, you didn't know this is the assumption that you're using to, to answer this question. So, this creates a huge problem. Because if we're ever going to see differently, which is what creativity is, which is an innovation, which is we have to not only accept that we have assumptions, but we have to know what they are. And festivals like Burning Man are a wonderful place to discover and explore and question those boundaries and those assumptions. So what then makes the human mind beautiful? It's that we're delusional, okay? Literally, we are delusional. And I'm gonna show you an example, okay? So I need sound on this. Okay, here we go, we're almost finished. Now I want you to listen to this sound and I want you to see if you can hear some words in it. Make some sense of it. All right, here we go. How many people can hear words in that? Yeah, yeah okay. Um, <laughs> give me a word that you heard. It's fun to smoke marijuana. Okay, let's see if you can hear it's fun to smoke marijuana. Okay, ready? Okay, we're going to listen to it one more time. I want you to see if you can get better at hearing it's fun to smoke marijuana. Ready? Can you hear it's fun to smoke marijuana? Are you getting better at it? Right. Notice you're getting better at hearing something that doesn't actually exist. All right? You are delusional. Right? That is the basis of culture. To create meaning out of the meaningless. And that's what makes the human mind beautiful. What were you just listening to was this. Played backwards, okay? So, to finish off then, we walk through the world responding, all right? We get information and respond. Your brain is only ever responding, even the colors you see, the way you see yourself, the way you see other people, according to the history of experience that's given you your assumptions. Your brain has literally encoded those assumptions, those boundaries. Right? The only way you can ever begin to see differently is to accept the fact that you have assumptions, that those assumptions define who you are. That's the first step, is to have that awareness. The second step is to discover what those assumptions are, which is almost impossible. It's very difficult. That's the essential part of other people. They reveal your assumptions to you by challenging you. Okay? 
The third step is to challenge those assumptions. And that's something your brain hates. We hate to step into uncertainty. We hate to question the things that we assume to be true already, especially if they're about who we are. Okay? So the point then is that this is the basis of things like compassion, creativity, choice, community, and courage, which I call the five C's. Okay? By having this awareness that your perceptions are defined by your history of experience and, and your assumptions, can we begin to experience those five things? So thank you very much. I hope that was useful.